thirsty elephants often race into pools. But the matriarch knows that her family must not rush in. This pool is stagnant, and the elephants have a trick that deals with that. Sediment settles to the bottom, and the cleaner, fresher water lies on the surface. They skim it carefully from the top. Then, as gently as elephants can, they move forward slowly, trying not to disturb the stagnant layers. But precious water like this draws in herds from far and wide. In the exuberance of a greeting, all their careful work is undone. When bulls are forced together by the need for water, tempers can flare. See how the younger wolves are excited by the arrival of their father, Storm. These younger wolves are his pups from previous years. In fact, they still lick at his mouth to be fed, like they did when they were small. It's so rare to see this. I feel very lucky. Then, my eye in the sky spots a black bear approaching the den. I see it before the wolves do. They don't realize the approaching threat. While the black bear would be hard pressed to take on an adult, it could be after the pups. the bear tries to go into the trees where the pups are. Storm bites him in the rear, forcing the bear to turn back to face him. By working 
working together, a combination of pushing from behind and leading him on, Storm and his offspring get the bear away from the den. I think that bear is just as happy as the wolves to be out of there. You've got parked vehicles coming through. You've got trucks loaded up with charcoal. And that's why Jiminuka is just so tense about crossing the road. Well, if it was just him, it'd be fine. So he's just waiting nervously for a quiet time to cross with his whole family. I feel for him. After 20 minutes, we take matters into our own hands, and Lambert stops the traffic. Look at this, oh my gosh. Now, there you go, that's confidence for you. With Chimanuka in charge, the orphan Morali is confident enough to venture out. Whoa. Oh, fantastic. Oh my gosh, look at this. The whole family. Moira and his mother are almost the last ones to break cover and scamper over. Absolute confidence, look. With all the youngsters across safely, Chimanuka can stop being the lollipop man. The boss showing us that despite there's a road running through, this is still his jungle. <laughs> I love it. It's a great relief to see the whole family across the road in safety. This area is more densely forested than the sections we've been in before. It's crisscrossed with gorilla trails, so there are clearly other families around. And Muguruka's arrival just adds to the numbers. Here he comes. Oh my word. Right down onto the road. Amazing. He didn't even, I thought maybe stop me, be a bit reluctant, but of course he came meters from me to see him out in the open like this. You see how big he is. Amazing. Marco gather for their annual rut. Males must fight for the right to breed, but on these sheer cliffs, any slip by either animal could be fatal. A snow leopard, the rarest of Himalayan animals. It's a female returning to her lair. These are the first intimate images of snow leopard ever filmed in the wild. She greets her one-year-old cub. Her den is well chosen. It has exceptional views of the surrounding cliffs. On these treacherous slopes, no hunter other than the snow leopard would have a chance of catching such agile prey. A 
female with young makes an easier target. Her large paws give an excellent grip and that long tail helps her balance. Silently, she positions herself above her prey. This bear is coming right up to me. Unfortunately, it ignores the seal's breathing hole and heads straight for me. She's coming closer and closer. Oh my god. She is enormous. She's. She was. Really is why I've come here to see these animals, to get to understand them. See them up close. Hey, bear. Oh my god. She's right here. Hey, bear. The bear's nose is thousands of times more powerful than mine. It's gathering information before it approaches, like it would when stalking a seal. My scent is strongest at the weakest point the door. Yeah, that door's not good. It's systematically trying from all angles. Being this close, you get an appreciation for what this animal is. It is one of the most powerful animals on the planet, one of the most intimidating animals on the planet, and one of the few animals that actually see us as food. The bear's nose has led it to a gap. You can sniff me, gosh, I could have actually touched his nose. Is that giving a little? She's feeling the pressure there, she can actually feel that that perspex is flexing. She's trying to see if she can crawl through it, she's trying to see if she can bite through it. It's getting a little bit hairy in here. I can feel that he's just pushing all his weight. Oh, not sure if I like that. Not sure if that's good. Our best bet would be to get our full weight on top of it, just like she does when she's breaking into seal layers, and push. Okay, don't go on top. On top's dangerous. Look, it's just towering above me. If I was to be standing side by side with this animal, it would be about seven feet tall. Oh, you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. Hey, bear. Every time she pushes, every time she exerts a little bit of force, she's using up calories. Is there anything worth eating here? Is there anything worth using up energy for? Inside there is, definitely. Oh, me. 
Once it realises it's too difficult to get in, the polar bear moves off. Um, definitely at this point, my fear far outweighs my fascination. This is closer to a polar bear than I ever, ever imagined I'd ever get. That's not something I'm going to want to do again in a hurry. Definitely not.